an epic band from the 60s to find rock and roll. Many would come, many would go, but only one would last through the ages. Of course, we're speaking of Led Mighty Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Although we can't use the name Led Zeppelin from here on in because this is an unlicensed DVD made as a poor tribute to them. I guess the first time I met Jimmy, I was off chops, I was just up in the market. Yeah, well, they were fucking great, you know? And fucking that guy, that guy I played the guitar in that band. I mean, there was a lot of engineers back there. Oh, hello! Like too. My testicles, they hurt. Yeah, I mean, I never actually saw them play, but I heard they were good. You know, I taught Mark Bolin how to play the fucking bongo. I remember when I met Bonham, he was smoking a cigarette. Led Zeppelin, no, I've never actually seen them or heard of them. Who the fuck are they? Oh, Led Zeppelin. Yes, yes, oh, that's right, yes. Um, what? No, no, I've never heard of them. No, I, I, my testicles are so... The hippie days. Yeah, man. My shirt. Oh, have I lost it? Well, I think I've lost it. Oh, uh, fucking British they were. I mean, they really were British. I mean, I can guitar and vocals for damn on a sect, and I guess, you know, we were brilliant. And everyone was just brilliant, you know? Just brilliant. Just, you know, top of the pops they were. They just exploded. Came busting out. I mean, everyone was trying a lot of different stuff in. Oh, 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 it was brilliant. I mean, you're brilliant. I'm brilliant. We had a lot of, a lot of uh, psychedelics back then. They, were, they really were the hippie days. But there was this other guy, who you might want to interview, who lives down the road. He knows somebody else who met this guy who went to a gig. It, it was much like a blimp, except it wasn't, it was, um, it had a motor in it, and it was made of lead, and instead of being full of honey, explodable gas, hydrogen, they decided, let's fill it with lead. I mean, I've got nits, and I think I caught them from Led Zeppelin, but I can't be too sure, you know, because I mean, fuck, I mean, everyone's got nits. Yeah, they're fucking sluts, right? They used to fucking jump in the bed, that's with Jimmy. I mean, they were really, they loved Jimmy. He was brutal. He was just brilliant, you know, just brilliant. And um, he was a really good guitarist, too. Um, yeah, then they went to America. I guess that's where they really kind of cut their own path there. And all these fucking septic tanks were going, these fucking bombs. What are they on about? We fucking showed them a bit of fucking steel right up them, like we gave it right up Fritz. Um, I smelt a lot of odour coming from the rehearsal room down the road where Led Zeppelin often rehearsed songs. That was before they went to the tour uh, of America, which proved to be very successful, or so I hear from my mum. And that was where I caught up with uh, Jimmy Page's brother, Brian Page, who also discussed about his brother's preoccupation with satanic, uh, ritualistic, uh, I don't know, like he, he said he wanted to fucking kill people, he said. He wanted to cut someone's head off. And I just laughed. I said, not in the hippie era, surely, young lad. You know, and I said, just smoke a peace pipe. And then I tried to plug a, a fucking uh, a, a, a cord into his head. And it was bizarre because I said, well, you can't cut the lunch down here on Oxford Street, you know, Brian. And he's, I don't know, it was just amazing that I was so close to somebody who was possibly famous. And in this case, in Led Zeppelin. So that's probably why you're talking to me today. You know, I mean, a lot of people talking about, um, bloody Led Zeppelin, there's also Black Sabbath as well, they're having a good run. But I think Led Zeppelin really were the, the power band at the time. They, they did a lot of work for charity and whatnot. They were always, always proud to call themselves Brits. Part three, everyone's a yarn bird. Yeah, I mean, all fucking, once I got rid of my nits and stuff, I was pretty clean to get out there and start rooting again. I, I sensed with Led Zeppelin there was a maturity there, an understanding about where suits and pants fit in, and where guys who hang out down at the barn would sometimes have to suck each other's cocks because they couldn't get a root. I'm like, I guess fucking Jimmy Page sort of started his way in, in the fucking yarn birds, but I mean, lots of blokes are having a fucking go, you know? Yeah, well, I'm not saying that I contracted syphilis directly from John Bonham, but I'm sure by sitting on his drum stool I got a very angry itch. And that later became influence for the angry inch, or six inches, of pleasure. I can't remember which one it was. But his drum stool, I burnt it. 
and uh, he became very angry with me and he said well look I've got a fucking play later on so I'm gonna have to sit on your face for the entire three hours of my show and um, I actually had my nose broken there was blood pissing out and he just squashed his buttocks straight in there and he said well this will teach you won't it this will teach you not to burn my fucking drum stool and I actually was surprised that I did learn not to do that ever again I was playing the, uh, the uh, some thing beside me I, I think it's a piano! Yes, that's it, a piano! And it made me want to play more minstrel shows. I mean, there was something kind of sexy about it. Kind of mystique. Ebony, ivory, I, I can relate to coming together as one. So as my creative juices, uh, I could hear their music coming through the walls and they only lived four kilometres away. Everyone was touched by them. And we touched them. It was a super cool arrangement of touching. I started to question why I should bother. Why I should bother um, playing music at all because, you know, it was quite obvious that they had cornered the market in music that people wanted to listen to. And I thought, well, I could play music people don't want to listen to, but who'd want to listen to it? And the obvious answer is nobody. Well, my all got fucking, you know, <laughs> I've got stories I can tell you. About heaps of people, heaps of people, and especially to do with, with uh, Led Zeppelin. But, but, but I won't. Nah, it wouldn't be right. And then, then I hung myself, and quite badly as well. I actually um, bruised my neck and ended up pissing myself. Oh, I remember that time what, when he tried to hang himself and stuff. He was, he was trying to hang himself like a fucking crooked fucking picture he did on the wall. He, um, Oh, it was a silly time, well, admittedly, like, there was lots of ups and downs, I mean, we all had our fun, we all had our, our time in the sun. A lot of the songs actually written about me, there's that one called Dave, and that other one called Here Comes Dave, and Crooked Dave's hung himself all fucked up again. And this fat guy here, that's actually John Bonham's uh, brother Brian that we were referring to earlier. He actually ate John Bonham. Jabba, he was a fucking cunt, rough cunt of a fucking manager he was. The American Nightmare. When they went again to America, they had some good times, but they also had some bad times. I mean, everyone seems to look back and go, oh, they were the good times, but I mean, there was a fucking fair few bad times too. I mean, I mean, <laughs> we've all had them, haven't we? I mean, just the other day, right, I was watching this show, and uh, fuck it, there was this person from America, and they were all like, fucking, eh, look at me, I'm American. They were talking about me all during their trip uh, through America, especially during the Midwest on the bus, they apparently just talked about me non-stop for 36 hours. And I could feel it. My ears started to get very red when I was um, trying to hang myself back in Oxford. And um, I actually was unable to kill myself properly due to the irritation of my ears. It, it, it's, um, it's amazing how much stuff they learn when they were using an organ. I mean, <laughs> the organ's it's an amazing instrument. I mean, it's, it's buttons. And there's, there's, there's levers, there's um, oh, is it, is it foot pedal, um, they were fucking amazing, all of them, they just played all instruments, but I mean he was amazing Led Zeppelin how he did that, he was amazing, he was like four people, <laughs> and I especially remember one incident, we were, we were down at the, um, the Oxford Tavern having a, having a couple of cold ones, and um, they came in and they were, oh, no, I guess they were all a bit pumped up and stuff. Well, it wasn't actually them, it was, it was their uh, second cousin, uh, what's his name? Gary, Gary Schnolven, yeah, Schnolven, old Schnolvesy, he comes in. He's going, you won't believe what fucking um, Yardbirds had done. And he goes, what are Yardbirds done? He goes, they bloody bought a ticket to see Led Zeppelin. And I was like, he what? He's amazing. Yes. And I actually wrote a letter to the examiner and I said, Robert Plant is out of his fucking mind if he thinks that he ended World War II because quite honestly, the gumption of that man, and also John Bonham. I oh, mate, I fucking write, like, they write cunts and stuff, but I still love playing bass like in, in my band, Let's Zip. <laughs> I mean, is it, it's not wrong to kind of make your, your mark on someone else's music. But I mean, no one, no other cunt's fucking doing it right now. You can. And that ends the Led Zeppelin tribute. Enough said about the band. Enough bloody said.